What's up Node.js developers? In today's video, we're gonna set up your macOS system to be ready for React Native CLI development. By the end of this video, we're gonna set up all the tools, all the necessary tools, including Node.js, NPM, Git, Android Studio, Xcode, and other necessary tools to start working with React Native CLI and build your next applications. In this video, I'm gonna use MacBook Pro M1 Pro chip, but uh, the steps that we are gonna cover should apply also for Intel chips. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The first thing that I'd like to do on any new macOS system is to install iTerm2 uh, because it comes with a lot of improvements in comparison with the terminal that comes by default with macOS. So let's go to iTerm2.com and download the, um, yeah, the zip from here. Let's open the um, iTerm and let's move to the application folder when it asks. So the pip3 command requires the command line developer tools. Let's select cancel here and check automatically. And now we should be good to go. If I close everything, here is the item two. And we're gonna use this item two throughout the rest of this tutorial. All right, so uh, the next step is to install Homebrew, which is a package manager for macOS. And uh, let's go to Homebrew website and grab the installation command from there. Here we see the first things is the installation command. So let's copy it from here and let's go back to our item and paste in our command. Press enter. The latest version of uh, Homebrew supports M1 Pro chips. And um, yeah, that's, that's great because we don't have to work with Rosetta or anything or other hacks. Okay, and once uh, Homebrew finish installing, that's not it. We need to uh, run these two commands in our terminal in order to add Homebrew to our path. So let's copy them separately like this, command C, command V, and the second one here like this. Command C. So now if I write brew dash dash version, I see homebrew 3.3.2. And let's also try to close our terminal and open it again and make sure that homebrew is there. So brew version again, I see it 3.3.2, uh, which means that it has added to the path and now we have access to the brew command. What's also good about brew is that while we installed it, it automatically installed for us git. So if I write git dash dash version, I see the git version uh, 2.30.1, which is good. However, if you don't have it installed, you can run brew install git and this will automatically install git on your system. Let's run it again because it might uh, bring some updates. All right, so if I run again git version, I see the same version, which is good. Now with the help of Brew, we can install some of prerequisites, some of the dependencies that we need uh, before getting into Expo CLI. The first one is Node. Node is the JavaScript environment which will help us run our Expo and React Native applications. And also it comes with the NPM, which is a Node Package Manager that will help us install other tools and dependencies inside our projects. So uh, let's clear our screen here and start with installing Brew install Node. All right, so after finishing uh, installation, let's do clear and let's uh, check the node version. 17, that's good. And let's do NPM version as well. 8.1, perfect, let's move on. The next tool that we will install is called Watchman. And this is a tool developed by Facebook that will uh, automatically rerun your project whenever uh, you have some changes in your files. So this is uh, a great way to speed up your development and you don't have to restart the server anytime you do some changes. So let's do homebrew, not homebrew, just brew, 
brew install watchman. All right, so now that all the common dependencies that we will need both for Expo and React Native CLI are installed, such as Node.js, NPM, Watchman, and other tools, now let's get into the details on installing and setting up our system specifically to be able to build React Native application for Xcode for iOS and Android. And we're gonna start with iOS. And uh, the first thing that we will need to build React Native application for iOS devices um, we will need Xcode on our machine. The easiest way to install uh, Xcode is by opening App Store, not Apple ID, but App Store. And here, let's search Xcode. And we need the first one, Xcode by Apple. So let's get it and install it. Finally, Xcode has been installed, so let's press open and follow the next steps that we need to take there. All right, and we need to agree with the service agreement. All right, this asks if we need to install Rosetta. So I'm not sure if we will actually need it. I'm trying my best to set everything up in order for us not to need this Rosetta, which helps us run applications that are not yet compatible with Apple. So let's press not now and we will install it as soon as we need it. And the next step that we need to set up is the Xcode command line tools. So to do that, we open the Xcode and here we select Xcode, we go to the preferences and here, let's go to the locations uh, path and from the command line tools, let's select the Xcode 13.1. Let's add the password. Okay, that, that was it regarding command line tools. The next uh, one is the iOS simulator. To do that, also here in the preferences, let's go to the components tab. I'm not sure if I'll be able to zoom in here. No, I am not. So from here, we need to select the iOS version that we would like to test it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the latest one. And yeah, let's install it. The next set of tools that we will need to install need for that another package manager to be able to install those tools. So I'm speaking here about the Ruby and the Gem, Gem, I don't know how it's pronounced, package manager. And to do that, first of all, we need to update uh, Ruby in, on our system. So let's do brew install Ruby. All right, so now that we updated Ruby, let's try to install the next dependencies that we need, which is CocoaPods. So let's start by doing Gem install. Uh, let's also specify the folder where we need to install. This is very important. So I would like it to be in a USR local bin. And let's do FFI and uh, it gave us an error because we didn't run it with sudo. So if we go back to that command, we can uh, run it with sudo to be able to create the directory that it needs there. Let's add our password. Now let's try to see the version of pod. So pod version 1.11.2, perfect. And the FFI. All right, so now that we have uh, all the dependencies installed related to Xcode, uh, we can go ahead and try to uh, generate a, one new React Native uh, application with React Native CLI and run it on our iOS simulator to see if everything has been set up correctly. So I'm gonna open iTerm. So now try to create our first React Native project with NPX React Native uh, in it. And here the name of a project, my first React Native project. Let's press enter. And if it's the first time you run this command, it will ask you uh, if you'd like to install React Native, which you need because it's the first time you run it. So press yes and wait a couple of seconds until it fetches the latest version of React Native. 
And after that, you should also see this Welcome to React Native and wait a bit until it downloads everything there. All right, so React Native CLI finished setting up our project. Let's try to, yeah, first of all, congratulations. This is your first win. If you didn't have any errors so far, that's really great. If you had, uh, comment down below what was the error and I'm gonna try to help you or post the issue on Discord or Google it and I'm gonna try yeah, to, to get back to you. But now let's see if uh, we will be able to run the application on our emulator. So first of all, let's uh, CD into our project and the name is my first React Native project. And from here we can run npm start. This will start the development server, the Metro server. And uh, to build and run it on iOS, we will actually need a new terminal. So we can um, command B, I think, we'll split the screen. No, I forgot how to split the screen. So that's why I'm just gonna open a new terminal here. Uh, let's also do CD my first React Native project. And from here, let's do npm run uh, iOS. This will build and run our uh, application on an iOS simulator and we see that it automatically opened this simulator for us. And hooray, we successfully set up everything and our application is running on this uh, emulator. So that's a great success for us. That's really nice. And um, yeah, congratulations. Now your environment is set up for React Native development with React Native CLI and iOS simulator. The last step that I want to uh, show how to do is how to install the IDE where we will be able to uh, work and to update our application. My idea of choice is Visual Studio Code. You can go ahead and install any other IDEs that you prefer. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to show you how to install Visual Studio Code. So let's go to the code.visualstudio.com and here download Mac Universal Build. After it had finished installing, let's open the zip. And before opening, let's move Visual Studio Code to the applications. So let's grab it like this. I guess that's how you do it. And do Visual Studio Code to open it here. If you're interested in how to set up Visual Studio Code Farfer in order to uh, speed up your development with React Native, check out the video on my channel with the top 10 Visual Studio Code extensions that I'm using every day. All right, guys, that is it for today. Now your macOS system is ready for you to start working and building React Native applications. I'm really curious what you're gonna build next. Let me know down in the comments. And uh, yeah, check out also this video and this video. They're both awesome uh, for more React Native content. Bye-bye.